M0FXP, welcome back to my videos on the Anytone 878578 and it looks like they have added a new satellite feature which is identical to the OpenGD77 system which looks like this, if I go menu and we're on the Bofang 1701 OpenGD77 then go down to satellite menu, you'll get the, a list of satellites select and then you see the satellite and when you select it again with the up and down arrow you get the actual time and more information there Go down again get the frequency receive and transmit and then we can move back out so you get the idea so any tone have have done the same thing so I'm going to go to the download. I will try this with the 578 as well. But first of all, let's just download the 3.04 firmware. And this is for the 878 models. Quickly download that. Get rid of the advertising, of course. And then these are all the, the files that we're going to need. And in the next video, I will be showing you how to install it. Wait for now, 7.3. Okay, let's download the software. Just click here. And I'll put it into a folder that I'll name if I go on the right-hand side just here. Right-click and create new folder. And we'll call it 878. Sat. We've got a folder there. Then go back to the downloads. Click the down arrow. Then click the zip and extract that folder or file. Click extract to, and then I'm going to put it into that 878 SAT that's on my desktop. Click OK. And I'll double click that folder. Just make sure the software's there because I'm going to read my radio first. So it says here CPS, so I'm going to double click that first. And then run the setup. We get this warning, click more and then run anyway. I'll let it go through until we see the software. Just go, it says 3.04 there. And launch, little tick there finish so there's our software if we right click the windows square square go to device manager and just get the com port number and if you've got the right cable in with the right driver it's mine's com 23 close that then go back to the software and go set com set here let's set just here and then down a bit com and then look for 23 and click ok and we should be able to read the radio now so we'll go read from radio click ok and it's reading look so that's going to have all our memories and all our you know settings that we like click ok and then i'm going to go file uh, save and then just save that in my documents somewhere documents I'm going to call it 878 um, preset I'll give it a name that I'll remember document just save so whatever happens we can at least load that back on click OK now we're going to go straight to we're going to dive in with the firmware now so we need to get the radio into firmware mode by turning it off. Press the PTT and the, the, the top button. So turn it off, PTT, green button on mine, turn on. You know when you're in firmware mode because it flashes red. The LED on top flashes red. So we've done that. Now we're going to go, uh, let's have a look now says firmware so you go to tools firmware and icon update like so and uh, open file we're going to go like saw 
go to desktop again, find that folder which was called 878, cool, try to find it, 878, I bet it's right there in front of me and I can't even see it, of course right at the top, and then we're looking for the actual firmware one, not APRS, not CBS, there it is there, firmware, and there it is there, the SPI file, click OK, COM23, I haven't changed the COM speed, I'm just going to click right and see what it does. And it's doing it anyway because you can right click the, your actual com port, com port go to properties uh, so that will put the firmware in now they do recommend a factory reset at the end of firmware to make sure that everything takes so I'll, I will do that but remember we've, we've made a you know we've saved all our settings onto the into that file that we saved just now. I'll leave it live if it's boring. And then I plan to do to check the 578 next to see if, if the newer firmware have done this. I'm sure they will, but it's whether they've done it already. That's it. Click OK, and when it reboots, what should happen really, even though we haven't factory reset it yet, what you should see, I'll try and make it a bit bigger, you should see that new, the new satellite setting, let's just go into menu, just, there it is there, satellite, so it's in there, but we need to get the location in there, so that's good, the, um, the firmware's gone in. Now, factory reset is turn off the radio, press the PTT button, and the one underneath, which is quite fiddly, hold them in, turn on, and you should get the option to factory reset. There you go. And then we're going to go confirm. It will ask for the time on, but I won't do that now. initialize once it's done that we're going to reload my little code plug right it's going to put confirm I can put the time in later so that's now factory reset so it's not going to look anything like it did just now back to the software there you go it looks very blank so back to the software now we go file Look, it's not even even the screen timeout is um if you look there it's gone so let's go to file open file open and then go to documents find that 878 pre remember that that's okay and then we're gonna write that to the radio hopefully the radio will look as it did before Uh, I might try and get my location in now. I don't think it will get a. Um, GPS lock at the moment. And these newer ones, they, they hold 500,000 contacts. They have GPS, DPR, GPS and APRS. So there's my radio back as it was. You can see the little GPS logo at the top which is not the colour for what you know to show that it's got a lock. I'm just gonna have a quick look at my manual GPS. Right, a couple of tips. If you go tools, then down to options, you'll see you can turn on things like Bluetooth, GPS, APRS, and analog APRS. Click OK. Obviously send that to the radio. The other one is if you go to optional settings, then across to satellite location you can select fix here up here when you've enabled uh, the item I just showed you in tools you click OK you can go APRS look and in here you can set your manual location look I've got it in here just here just type it in I use a site called La longitude latitude 
you just put in your location, your postcode, and, and then it will give it you. But you do get all the advertising, as you can see. But just type it in here. If I put in Bristol UK and then find, and look, we've got the coordinates there, latitude, longitude. So we're not getting a GPS lock. So what we'll do, we'll go menu, go down until we see the word GPS. There's GPS, okay, select, and we can turn the GPS on by pressing the top one and selecting on, but it's just not getting a GPS in my house. And that's okay, because we can go to GPS mode and we can, no, not that one. Let's get the right one. What we'll do, instead of selecting GPS, we'll go down to the satellite, the new satellite tab select it then location and instead of choosing gps beacon we're going to choose fixed and it's got the location that i entered on my pc uh, that you just saw then we'll go back and now we'll go down to satellite and it will load up all the information I'm not, I would think that you would need to update the satellite information every now and again. I'll find out. I mean, it's, it's, it's finding, if you, if you look at the OpenGD77 one, the way that works is every now and again, you have to sort of remind it, you know, the satellite positions. It always uses your location first to calculate it, but I, I'm pretty sure you'd have to, it's called, on the GD77, it's called KEPS. Anyway, let it do its thing. And I'll make a, if I find it, I'll make a separate video on the, on updating the satellite mode. We'll have a quick look inside the CP, CPS, because it might be in there. But let, it just, let it do its predicting thing as we wait. Okay, I just watched a video by 2E0UKH, so big thanks to Chris. And he says, make sure you've got the GPS turned on and the UTC time is correct. And that's why mine's frozen. And the KEPS information I just talked about is in Tools Satellite. So let's go to that. So we'll go Tools and we're looking for the satellite word, Satellite Data Writing. Uh, make sure our cable's connected, which it is. I'm just going to reboot mine before I do that. Okay, so we'll go Tools, Satellite, and then Write. That was quick, and it always is quick, um, even with the GD77. The next one is the time. Taking a while to reboot. Anyway, time. So we're going to go menu. I'm now looking for time. And there is a site called timeanddate.com where you can put in your location. It gives you your UTC, which mine looks like it's zero. So we can go into optional settings and put that here. Look. See that? Your UTC. So find out what yours is. Let's look at the actual radio. If we go menu down to other settings then other settings radio set other let's go backwards we will find it menu settings radio set then go down to other function select with the green button then you've got to go all the way down you can actually set your utc here as well when we find it time zone green button there's your utc plus or minus select then you want to set the time and also look time display we're going to turn that on make sure that's on because i want to see that now it's date and time time set and then to change the green part the year just go up and down so 
24 is fine. Press P1 to move along, up and down. Yeah, so it's September the 17th, which is correct. And then we'll go press P1 again. And it's, yeah, 10 o'clock is the right time. We go P1 to the zero and the second. And then confirm. So now, in theory, if we back out and go menu down to satellite, confirm, go to straight to satellite this time, it should predict, and it should load all those satellites and then give us a long list. And when we select the long list, we can uh, see the actual satellite window and it's going to give us our frequencies. It's going to calculate the Doppler shift. And really you need a directional antenna, although I have stood outside with this before and you can hear that, oh there it is there, you can hear people in the area calling up to the satellite, but to do, you know, but you need a, a directional antenna really. So anyway, well, so let's go look, it's found the ISS at the top of the list. And some info, you can see the little satellite there. Now what, go look, going down, I'm clicking down now. 10.59, all oh, right, so it's gonna pass at 10.59, is it? Well, that's interesting. Let's uh, have a quick look at what my computer says. Yeah, well, you can see the path there. I'll put the link in for that as well. Okay, well, I think that's enough. Elevation, there's our receiver, 437795, and you can see it changing. Transmit, 14599, that's changing, and the CTCSS is there. That's it, or you can go back, go to a different satellite, and you're going to get that information up and down. And that's it. So as long as you every now and again, or every time you use it, I would say, go back to your software and do the whole tools, satellite data writing, make sure your cable's connected. Then write. Will be written, will be written to the radio GPS satellite data. Continue very quick click OK so give it a go uh, I'm gonna check out the 878 next let's find out if they've already added it to the 878 and the software version I've got for the 578 is 2.08 bye for now